Hi, I'm Stumpy Nubs, and this is how you make a wooden safe. The depth of your safe is determined by the width of your boards. My boards happen to be nine inches. If you want a deeper safe, just use wider boards. I cut the side panels nine and a half inches tall, and the top and bottom panels are seven inches wide. I decided to use the finger joint jig on my new table saw sled for the box joinery. I love it because it's fully adjustable to any size joint. I'm cutting quarter inch finger joints because I like the way the narrow fingers look. Don't forget to check to be sure your box is square before that glue dries. A well-fitted finger joint shouldn't need clamping, but I do it anyway. It gave me a chance to use this special clamping system I picked up from Rockler a while back. It's really an ingenious idea that works especially well if you're like me and you like to make your fingers a little proud so you can sand them flush and smooth. I wish I had invented it, but I did. I bought it. And if you want to see where I did, you can find the link in the show notes. Measure the inside of the box and cut a back panel that fits right inside. Then cut another piece that is 1 16th of an inch shorter than the box's inner height and 1 quarter of an inch wider than the box's inner width. This will become your door. We cut it wider because we're going to be ripping it into three pieces and we had to take into account the width of the saw blade. The left of those three pieces is 1 and 3 quarter inches wide the center, two and five eighths of an inch, and the third, whatever you have left. Hopefully that's at least an inch and a half or you're gonna be in trouble. I prefer to leave it a bit wider than I need to for now because I can trim it to fit the door once it's mounted. We're eventually going to be gluing all of these strips back together and we want the grain to all look like one panel. That's why we're going to all this trouble rather than just cutting these three parts from different pieces. Now take your center piece and cut it into two pieces, measuring three and five eighths of an inch from each end. You're essentially cutting five eighths of an inch out of the middle of the piece. Again, this is so that the grain all lines back up later. Measure from the left side of the lower of your two halves, five eighths of an inch. Then another quarter inch, five eighths, quarter, five eighths, and you should be left with a quarter. Carry those points three eighths of an inch down from the end. You're gonna cut out the waste in between. You can use a bandsaw or a finger joint jig to just nibble it out. The other half of that centerpiece gets a similar treatment so that the two are mirror images of each other. Find the center points on the inner edges of your other two door parts. I really like these center finding rulers for this task. I don't remember where I got this one, but you can find them all over the place. By the way, I hope you marked your parts so you can get the orientation back right when we glue this thing back together. Remember that grain pattern. At the drill press, bore a half inch hole, one inch deep into the edge of the wider of those two pieces, the one that goes on the left side of the door. On the other piece, bore the hole all the way through. Make sure you get these holes in the right place because they have to line up later. I don't care how you do it, but cut three one and a quarter inch circles out of half inch thick material. I used a bandsaw to rough them out and a stationary sander to round them to my compass line. Find the center point and draw a line across the face. Then mark a point on that line that is three eighths of an inch from that center point. Bore a one quarter inch hole through each circle at that spot. It's a little dangerous to hold them by hand while you do this, so use a clamp, safety first. Now bore a half inch hole in the center of each circle. Use a chisel to remove the points so that you're essentially left with a large hole with a little quarter inch divot on top. Remember those two parts that you drilled the half inch hole through? On the narrower of the two, that's the one on the right that has the hole going all the way through it, locate the center of the face and scratch a line across it. Then mark points one half inch from the center of that line in both directions. Use a quarter inch bit to bore holes at those two points and at the center and at any points in between to try to remove all that waste and create a slot, which will be located right over that half inch hole that you drilled through it. After you clean it up with your chisel, 
you can glue your drawer parts back together. The tumbler dials have to be numbered. I divided them into six equal parts, and then I used a steel stamp to emboss the numbers, which I then darkened with a pencil. You could just number them by hand if you have better penmanship than I have. As you do, remember that the numbers that you want as part of your three-digit combination should be located on the opposite side of each wheel as that little quarter-inch divot that's in the hole in the center. Once the door is dry, slide a half-inch dowel as deeply into the hole as you can. Use a pencil to mark the location of each tab in the mouth opening, as well as the left end of the slot, and where to trim the dowel so that it's flush with the edge. Remove the dowel, trim it to length, and bore three one quarter inch holes right between each of those pin locations you marked on it. Make sure that the holes are all in line with each other and that they don't pass all the way through the dowel. Then bore another hole at the part you marked to indicate where the left end of that slot was. This hole should be on the opposite side of the dowel, 180 degrees from the other three. I also think it's a good idea to chamfer the ends of the dowel so that they can go in and out of their mating holes easily. Put a drop of glue on each pinhole. Not too much, you don't want to squeeze out. Then, with your dials in place, slip the dowel through them so that the pinholes line up with the tabs in the mouth opening. Insert one quarter inch pins that you cut from a dowel into each hole. The pins should be just long enough that they stick out of the hole about an eighth of an inch. Line up your wheels so that you can slide the pins into those divots in the holes in the center. Then twist dowel and wheels 180 degrees towards the back of the door, which will expose the final hole that you bored in your dowel. Glue a final pin in there to use as a handle. If you look at the back of the door, you can now see how the mechanism is going to work with all the dials lining up and allowing the bolt to move back and forth. I used a pair of mortise-free hinges to attach the door. You may have to test the fit and shave off some material so the door will close properly. The final step is boring the hole for the bolt to lock into. Now the best way to do this might have been to bore it before you put your box together, but I wasn't entirely confident that it would line up with the bolt once the door was all assembled and the hinges were mounted. So I opted to bore the hole from the outside after the door was mounted. It left a visible hole, but I can plug that up later. Now you may decide to round off the edges on the router table if you like to give it more of a safe look. I like mine square, and I don't know how I'm going to finish it, probably a wiping varnish or something like that. I think I'll lock my cold ones in here. See you next time.